All right, and I just wanted to do a quick talk on on uh, Parzival by Wolfram von Eschenbach. Now, I haven't finished reading this. I tried reading this back in the spring, and I just couldn't. I couldn't get into it. Like I just couldn't get into it. Um. So I'm trying it again, but it's really bizarre. It, this is the German, uh, the German tradition. This was written in the first decade of the 13th century. So 12, you know, like 1210, 12, 12, 8, oh, 08, somewhere in there, somewhere in the in that time frame. And it's a grail romance. But when you're talking about the there's all kinds of weird stuff going on in this with the genealogy of Percival. And I and I apologize for the sound quality on this. You know, it probably sounds bad. But I just wanted to talk about the Welsh origins. So these, these stories, they all go back to the uh, 5th and 6th century. And the bardic tradition, you know, people singing or telling these stories. And they end up... The, the Percival character, a Parzival, he ends up uh, in the Welsh tradition. His origin is a character named Peridur, P-E-R-E-D-U-R, -E -E son of a frog, E-F-R-A-W-G. This is part of the Welsh tradition, and then there's a collection of Welsh romances that are, that are compiled in Middle Welsh in the 12th to 13th century. It's called the Mapinokian. Mapinokian. Spelled M-A-B-I-N-O-G-I-A-N. There's a Victorian translation by Lady Charlotte Guest. There's another translation done more modern by Oxford, okay? The Oxford World Classics, which I'm interested in picking up. Because it has a, it has an old uh, Welsh telling of a of a Grail story involving this uh, Parador character, but he's not looking for a Grail in this. It's like a, I think it's a severed head on a platter. <laughs> it's weird, man. So Corinthian de Troyes or Corinthian de Troyes is borrowing from that. Or vice versa. It's really hard to tell because the Mapinokian and Corinthian's stories of Arthurian lore are kind of contemporary to each other. So it's really hard to tell if if the Welsh, the Middle Welsh, are stealing their romance from Corinthian or if Corinthian's stealing it from them. And it's probably a little bit of both. There's probably some cross pollination going on culturally speaking. But then you have like Robert. Okay, Robert de Baron comes along and he has a genealogy that's laid out for Percival. And Percival in this is the grandson of Bron. Bron is the fisher king, all right, who is, be, who is the brother-in-law of Joseph of Arimathea. And then Bron's, uh, Percival's father is a man named Elaine Ligros. So you have French, right? It's French. So Percival's the questing knight. Then by the time you get to you get to this stuff here, all right, like the quest for the Grail, Galahad, the son of Lancelot, is the questing knight, and that's what uh, Sir Thomas Mallory he does here. This is relatively late. Okay, this is a, a later text, but Mallory takes all this pre-existing stories and kind of puts them all together. But if you look in the back, Percival has a completely different lineage. The lineage, the, the lineage of Percival is projected now onto like Galahad and Lancelot. And you have uh, Percival is the son of King Pellinore. The guy that's after the questing beast in Mallory. <laughs> so it's just, it's wild. So when I, when I start reading the Ephraim von Eschenbach, this is up full of all kind of anachronisms. You have uh, his father, 
Pers- Pars- Parzival's father is a guy named Gamuret, G-A-M-U-R-E-T. And let me read what he says here. I'll read, I think it's on page uh, 25. Anyways, this guy, he goes off questing. He's from a land called Anjou. And he falls in love with a Moorish woman who's living, I think, around Baghdad. So it's like he takes on, he starts wearing like green Samite, you know, and so it's all green. It's like the color of Islam. And we usually we associate the color green with uh, Gawain, right? And the green knight. Like Gawain ends up wearing a green sash and everybody wears green. But here it's, it's this guy named Gamuret. And he's talking to this lady. He says, um, so he leaves this lady behind and he leaves her a letter. And she finds a letter in her purse and... And she says it's in her husband's writing because she marries this Gamuret. And it's she says, so she knows French. says, the writing tells her, Here one sweetheart sends a message to another sweetheart. I am, by dint of this journey, a thief. I had to steal it from you because it causes such grief. Lady, I cannot conceal from you the truth, that if your religion were within my law, then I would always long for you. And as it is, I shall always feel pangs for you. If the little child born to us... Both takes on a man's countenance. Truly, he will be rich in courage. And he's going to give a lineage or a genealogy. He says, um, he's born of Anjou. That's the land. That's their kingdom. He says, love will be his lady, but he will be a storm in battle, a harsh neighbor to his foes. My son should know that his grandfather was called Gandon. He died in knightly combat. His father suffered the same fate. He was called Ad, Adad, Ad, Adans, A-D-D-A-N-Z. His shield seldom remained intact. He was by lineage a Briton, so this Adans was a Briton. He and Uther Pendragon were the sons of two brothers. So it's now tying the line of Parsifal or into the line, like they're related. They're related to the Pendragons, the King of England, the father of Arthur. So, um, this, so he and Uther Pendragon were the sons of two brothers whose names are both written here. One of them was Lazlies, Brickus, the other was called. The father of these two was called Mazadon. A fairy took him into Famurgin. She was called Turdaleskoi. He was her heart's fetter. From these two comes my line, which will forever shed a bright sheen. Each of them afterwards wore a crown and enjoyed ample honor. Lady, if you'll be baptized, you may yet win for me your own. So uh, there's a note in the back that talks about this Famurgin. So the note says here that Famurgin, Tordelescoyi, it says, Wolfram mischievously inverts place, name, and personal name here. Famurgin is Morgan the Fay. <laughs> Tordelescoyi, the land of joy. Both are familiar to him from Hartman von Oz Arik. So, yeah. Um, so, Morgan le Fay, the fairy, is uh, the the lover or the I don't know the wife of Marzan. There is a chart in the back of this that had well. There's a list of there's a glossary of names and places here because there's a lot. I mean I have to keep flipping to the back because it's very confusing at times. But here is the. Here is the chart, right? The flow chart. So up here at the top, you see uh, Mazadon. So this is Parsifal's great grandfather. And then here's the woman. This is Morgan Le Fay. So Morgan Le Fay ends up being uh, one of Arthur's aunts, his aunt, in this. I believe it's his aunt. Never mind. Morgan Le Fay is sorceress and half-sister to Arthur. 
She marries King Uriens of Gore and bears him his son, Sir Owain. So Morgan Le Fay is Arthur's sister in Mallory. So he, she is his great grandmother, or she's the great, yeah. It's confusing. They keep on messing with this stuff. So I want to say, like, when you're reading these, all right, then the the genealogies keep shifting around and changing is all I'm saying. So it gets really confusing. Now, there's also another weird thing that Ephraim does here with Uther Pendragon. And this is on uh, page 29. Gamuret, this is uh, Parzival's father, asked news. So he's at like a he's at a pavilion of this king of Zazamak. He says um, he asked what news of knights are present here, and his aunt's son replies, "Here from far off lands are knights pursued by love, many bold and daunted warriors. Roy's Uther Pendragon has many a Briton with him here." One matter pierces him like a thorn, that he has lost his wife, so Egraine, right, who was the was Arthur's mother, a cleric well read in magic with him, the lady has gone off. So she ran off with a cleric who's versed in magic. Arthur has gone in pursuit of him. So Arthur's gone to look for his mother, and... Um, it is getting on for three years now, indeed, since he lost his son and wife. Here, too, is his daughter's husband, well-versed in chivalry, lot of Norway, slow to falsehood and quick to fame, a bold and wise warrior. Here, too, is Gawain, his son, King Lot's son Gawain. So we get some of these characters, but the whole part about Egraine running off with a cleric that knows magic and Arthur chasing after them, I mean, this is completely bananas completely different so you can't be too hard on people when they're doing crazy stuff with these characters and shifting the legend around and, and transposing genealogies and um doing weird stuff because everybody's doing it everybody does it's just we're so used to mallory's version right and everybody kind of uses mallory as their source you know this is what uh for instance um the uh, Once and Future King was kind of adapted from this material, T.H. White. Unless they're doing something totally crazy, like this dumpster fire of a movie, which I'll talk about at some point. Borrowed this. This is a train wreck. Anyways, that's all I really wanted to say. God bless. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll talk some more about this Wolfram when I'm done. Have a wonderful day.